So then another thing linked to the, the 12 football then, David, which is the, the 12 GPT, which I first heard about this from, um, I had McKay Johns on the channel, who's does he's got his huge channel, he shares content, and he mentioned your, he mentioned you, gave you a shout, cool. <laughs> um, and he said, you know, this looks really cool, and then obviously I, and I looked into it a bit more, but, you know, I'd love to kind of hear an explanation from you, and, and if at all possible, if you're able to show us anything in terms of share your screen, David, would that be? Yeah, that yeah, I will, I would, well, uh, um... Let me see. Well, you've disabled sharing. So uh, no, just a minute. There we go. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, so this is the thing. But just before I, I'll, I'll do a little. This is this could crash at any moment because it's our no, kind of production version that we're. Yeah. we're, we're uh, this is kind of live working on this afternoon. But what I, I'll just start with, yeah. So to give an overall, I just, I just want to give you a, a feeling for, um, what we do before I go into it because. Mm. What we've been doing for a very long time, and I mentioned Yerne here is in the middle. I've mentioned him. We've now hired, and this is Nicole. I also talked uh, a little yeah. bit about her. We've now hired a group of data scientists. And so what we've specialized in is building like lots and lots of different metrics. And the problem with that is it just becomes this massive disorganized mess of different metrics to answer different types of questions. And so something is like we do live match reports, we do like look at opposition players. This is the pitch control that we've talked about earlier. Yeah. We're building scouting models and we wanted to put it all in all together. And that was where we came up with the idea of 12 GPT because it was so much to do, so much talk about language models. We thought, how do we take all of those different things that we do and allow people to access it. And language is just a great way of doing it. If you can ask questions, you can ask, can I have this type of metric? And it can produce that type of metric. And so the starting point of that has been the 12 GPT. This is an example of the type of text that it produces. I took Noosa because there's a lot of interest about him moving to the Premier League. Um, and what do we do, right? So I mentioned we create all of these different types of models. Mm -hmm. You can think of this diagram here as a model of a player. Um, it tells us how involved he is in games, his passing quality, how he provides for his teammates and so on, and then ranks him compared to other players in these metrics. So this is based on some kind of event data metrics, very high on dribbling. And then what we do is we create words which describe the metrics. And that's where the beauty of ChatGPT and large language models comes in. If you describe for them first how the world works, then they can use that. They can use mathematical knowledge and they can interpret it into human knowledge. And for many, I mean, I, I think we didn't realize the extent of this, but often we would be talking to people like yourself or we'd be talking to coaching staff or we'd be talking to directors of football clubs we'd be showing in these graphs i'd be trying to explain them to them and they'd be nodding their head yeah yeah i really understand but then we found well wait a minute they don't always understand yeah and this suddenly everybody understands this and this is a description in words of what you see in the data yeah. and so we take the data and we convert it into words and the scouting tool itself just allows us to uh, I'll challenge myself is do you have a Premier League player you'd ha like to have a look at Premier League player right so um let's go let's just go with oh, see I'm a, I'm a Sunderland fan and we're not in the Premier League so okay no, no, no okay we're, we're um you are in the championship now yeah though, yeah championship so if you do <laughs> if you do Jack Clark from from Sunderland that would be good okay. <laughs> It's just that, yeah, as I said, this is the background. So it's just got to it's just got to load in the data because yeah, we haven't, yeah, haven't run the championship recently. So. <laughs> Hopefully Premier League without in, in without too you know <laughs> yeah. too much longer, I, I would hope anyway. Sunderland seem to be they do seem to have quite an interest actually in analytics as well. I've mm. seen like quite a lot of people working there and uh yeah. getting into that. So what position? Uh so you'd be we well, be classed as a winger, I would imagine. Yeah, uh, yeah there we yeah, go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Whoa, you've got a good player there. Yeah. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, off the charts dribbling. Yeah. And yeah. off the charts run quality. So, 
Okay, so Jack Clark is one of the most complete attacking midfielders you're encountered. Oh, right, okay. So this, this, yeah, it's already made a bit of a mistake. So but it's, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's got that right, but it should say in the championship. So yeah. any level of football, with a great deal of technical skills. So um, he's he's been linked with a few Premier League clubs, I think. Okay. So it's yeah, it's, that's that's cool. That's really good to see. That's that's very interesting. And then what we can do, this might be a little bit shaky, but we can we can take him and we can. Um, we'll have to load the data again here, but if we take in Clark and we can put him into the Premier League and see where he is, and it predicts not actually so much change, and that's because of his mm. um, that's because of his age as well, I think. So yeah. move to the Premier League, or oh, probably too early. Okay. So, <laughs> oh well, let's let's get. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry one. about that. So it's not quite ready for that. Is Clark, and I think this comes to a really important point. There's two parts to it. Um, this is still the demo version of this, so not everything is in there. Mm. But the other thing I want to say is that the way we should treat these types of language models is more as a colleague. So mm. we don't think we're not trying to make like predictions of the absolute truth. We see this as a way for um, sporting directors, for scouts to interact with data in a way that they feel comfortable with. Yeah. And it will make some suggestions you agree with. It will make some suggestions that you don't agree with. But it's this sort of tool for interaction that's that's uh, that's the way the way that we should use it. Mm. That's cool. That's really good. Nice, nice. Thanks for sharing that. Um, no, no problem. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous of just jumping into that. We're we're going to have. I mean, we're we've had a massive interest from clubs on this, um, and I think that's it's been a way to bring things together. So mm. before we'd work individually with clubs, but very much it was very much down to myself and Yane, and then the other data scientists who came in, ability to talk and work with the clubs. Now we're able to sort of scale that up. We're able to put it. I like we had one. I meet every week with a data scientist at uh, one club. And she said that she said, well, why do we need this when we've got you? And I was like, well, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, you probably don't. But the idea is that this can be scaled up and used by lots and lots of different clubs who don't yeah. always have access to a data scientist and yeah. are able to use it in that way. So we see very much that as our potential market you could say for the for the product because not every club has a data scientist they maybe have one person who's a bit interested some of them are overworked and then you can use that as an extra tool in order to to yeah. gain extra extra understanding 